Being people of God is Pastor Jeremiah. We would like to hear the word of God for the week. Um, before we start with the word of God, let us just have a word of prayer. So let us bow our head in reverence to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we bless you and we honor you. We give you glory, praise, worship, and adoration for you alone a God. You alone deserve to be magnified, to be glorified, to be exalted beyond our understanding or imagination. We would like to thank you for this day and for giving us the opportunity to come to you and receive of you to be empowered, to be equipped, to be entreated, to be admonished by you. We surround ourselves unto you and we ask you to open understanding, to open our spiritual ears to you, to your word, and that you impart knowledge and faith and understanding unto us, revelation in the name of Jesus. May we take from the deepest hidden things of your treasure and unveil them unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the knowledge of the truth, and we bow it and cast it into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, you are our teacher, you, lead, you are our leader, you lead us in all the truth. Thank you, we, are, we love you, we appreciate you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. So we're going to take a reading from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, from verse 36 to verse 41. So I read the word of God in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 36 to verse 41, in the name of Jesus Christ. And when they had sent away the multitude, they looked, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillow and they woke him and say unto him master cast thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and say one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him so we want to speak today about two enemies of faith two enemies of faith two enemies of faith we have been speaking about faith for the past few weeks as faith is the essence of our being as believers or as Christian for it is written in Hebrew chapter 10 verse 38 now the just shall live by faith but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This God speaking. But we cannot end this topic on faith without speaking about the enemies of faith. Faith is one of the most powerful tools that God has given to mankind. For faith enables you to operate in the same dimension that God himself operates. For as there is nothing impossible unto God, according to the word of God, in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, 
which says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And the same is also true for him that has faith in God, as Jesus himself stated in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, saying, Jesus said unto them, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And we can see that God operates in the dimension where everything is possible. And the believer also operates in the same dimension. For because you believe in him, hence God makes you makes your faith in him to function where he himself operates. I do not want to go deeper into this because God has allowed us to write a world book on the topic of faith. Though we still need to publish the book and make it available to everyone who needs it. But understand this thing. Faith is one of the most powerful tools that God has put in the hand of mankind. And Satan understand the tremendous amount of power that faith gives to the person who has a firm belief in God. Hence, he will do all that is in his ability to hinder every human being from tapping into that source of power and from unleashing its full potential. So I don't understand this truth that faith is one of the most powerful tools that God has availed to mankind. This is why it is crucial for people to know what are the tools that the kingdom of darkness is using against them to quench their true abilities. And here we speak more precisely about the, the true potential of your faith in God. We will be therefore speaking about two major or main enemies of faith. Fear is one of the main enemy of faith. The first one is fear. I want you to not this following sentence or following statement that I'm going to say. Please keep it in your mind. Every attack launched against you by the kingdom of darkness always starts with an element of fear in order to destabilize you or rather in the intent to destabilize your faith in God. I repeat it again. Every attack launched against you by the kingdom of darkness has always an element of fear to begin with. In order to destabilize you or rather with the intent to destabilize your faith in God. In verse 36 and 37 of our main scripture, we see that in the situation of the disciple, there is a certain great storm that introduced itself, causing them to be afraid. And as a result, they forgot about expressing their faith in God. Hence, for their faith to be neutralized, there had to be an element of fear. Thus, we can understand that for the kingdom of darkness to come against you, they always need an element of fear to start the attack against you. This 
was also the case with Job. For he was afraid that something wrong would happen to his children. Hence, he was always making an offering to God for every one of them. If you read Job chapter 1 verse 5, it says, And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered them an offer, burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and curse God in their hearts. Thus the job continually. This is why Job say the following after his children were killed, and evil came upon him and upon all that he had. In Job chapter 3, verse 25. It says, For the things, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me so you can see that there was an element of fear even in the attack that the the devil perpetrated against job there was an element of fear there before he started anything against job fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger pain or harm it causes anxiety worry panic etc thus you need to remember this very important statement every time there is an element of fear in you or around you know that there is an attack against you that has been playing in the spiritual realm by the kingdom of darkness and it is being now launched in the physical realm. From verse 38 to verse 40 of a main scripture in the book of Mark, chapter 4, we see how Jesus Christ reproached his disciples for being afraid or fearful asking them as well if they had no faith this alight very well what fear does it aims at quenching your faith completely fear crystallizes you fear paralyzes you causing you not to be able to move or act it does put you in bondage but the word of God says that we have not received such a spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So the spirit where we are free to express ourselves, the spirit where we are free to express our faith, not a free, the spirit that crystallizes you. Fear does hinders you in such a way that you will not express your faith. Hence, your problem would have the last say over you. Fear creates panic in you so that you no longer think through, but you will be in a hurry to act or make decisions. And 99% of the actions or decision taken in a state of panic will lead to further trouble and again the word of god state that we have not received such a spirit of fear second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says for god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind sound mind so the spirit that god has given to us is a spirit that allows us to think through it's not a spirit of fear but it's a spirit of power spirit that stand against situation that stand against problem that is born against evil circumstances the spirit of love that manifests love to others 
us. This is why God said to you and I, fear not anything but only him. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. It says, and fear not them that kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Only God can terminate your entire existence into hell. That's the last thing that you must fear. Hell. To go to hell. And only God has the last say. And only God can put you there. Only God is the church of all creation. So this is why you can, you must only fear him and nothing else. Nothing else. In fact, the expression fear not is found in the Bible 365 times. Meaning one fear not for every single day of the year. And God does not want any of us to be afraid on any given day of our life on earth. So you must never be afraid of anything except God. Let not fear paralyze you. In verse 38 of our main scripture, we see that Jesus Christ was also in a ship with them. With the disciple, yet he was asleep, and even though he was asleep, yet he was on the same ship with them. Hence, this tells us that we need always to make sure that no matter the situation we may find ourselves in, that we always involve God. For if Jesus was not in the ship, it would have been another thing about the disciple, we would not have heard of them today. But fortunate enough, he was there in the ship. Though he was sleeping, but he was there. So make sure that Jesus is always in your situation. He's always, you involve him always in whatever situation you may find yourself, in whatever circumstances you may always find yourself. The fact that Jesus Christ was asleep, but yet in the ship, with the disciples reveals unto us that the silence of God regarding your problem does not mean that he is not with you in the problem you are going through. The silence of God is because he wants to see you. He wants to see if you have understood you have understood the lesson even as the teacher remains silent when the students are writing a test for the teacher speak when it is the time to explain the lesson but when it is the time to apply what has been taught he must remain silent so God does the same it's the same principle with God if you check before, before taking the, the sheep, Jesus Christ was teaching them, teaching the disciples and other, other people. And among the teaching he gave to the disciples is the well-known parable of the soul that portrays very well faith. So the silence of God does not mean that he's not concerned with your problem. It does not mean that he's not there. But he wants to see if you have very well understood his teaching. He wants to see you applying what you have been taught. God expects us to speak our faith out in the face of challenges and not let ourselves be intimidated by them. You need to speak to your problems and rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ 